My name is H.A. Goodman, and I'm an author, columnist, and journalist. I had a, a very powerful and um, heated debate with Richard Spencer. Uh, we both have opposing viewpoints. I oppose his ideology, and um, I do appreciate him uh, taking the time to debate me. The last 20 minutes, I suggest everyone watch. That is below, and it's two opposing ideologies clashing in a, in a civil way. Uh, that is below. What do we have here? What's going on today? What's going on with the news? Let's type in John Bolton. Hopefully he's going golfing. No! Trump, <laughs> Trump replaces H.R. McMaster as National Security Advisor with John Bolton. So, not good. Um... <laughs> I am pleased to announce that effective uh, 4918, Ambassador John Bolton will be my new National Security Advisor. I'm very thankful for the service of General H.R. McMaster, who has done an outst outstanding job and will always remain my friend. There will be an official contact handover um, April 9th. So I'm pleased to announce uh, effective April 9th, 2018. So... I, Bolton is, yes, so taken at face value, it's, it's horrible. I did a segment on this, and I'm not going to sugarcoat. There's two ways to look at this. Either it's the absolute worst possible move for the economy, for national security, to hire Bolton, who is doesn't make sense half the time who Tucker Carlson clowned on his own show when Tucker Carlson clowns you that and you're conservative and you're a Republican that's problematic <laughs> because um, you know and I've been published in the Daily Caller I've been published in Salon Huffington Post and very proud that I've been published in the Daily Caller as well uh, it's a great publication, along with the Huffington Post. Great publication. Um, but it's not a good thing because John Bolton doesn't see the Iraq War as a mistake. He was part of the Bush administration. We can go on and on. He's very, very hawkish in terms of always, always resorting to, well, we have to attack Iran, we have to attack North Korea, we have to do this, we have to do that. At, fa on f at face value, yes, at face value, it is a bad move. But I'm not looking at it at face value, and I didn't explain it. I, I didn't explain it in my last, in one of my segments dis discussing this as simply a face value, uh, as simply as, well, you know, Trump has lost his mind. Number one, Trump's legacy, at least in his first term, is not going to be tax cuts, a meeting with Kim Jong-un, and then, you know, invading Iran and invading North Korea because John Bolton advises him to do so. That's ridiculous. So obviously, it's not good. Nobody, I'm not a fan of John Bolton. Oh, but the hire of Victoria Tenzing, I'm very happy. Very, very happy about. This is a, uh, Joseph Di, uh, DiGenova's wife. Very, very powerful husband and wife legal team. Very influential, very powerful. That's another s story. Mueller probe, politically, the days are numbered. Anyway, Trump is not going to go ahead and, and hire Bolton and then engage in Libya. So President Obama destroyed Libya along with Clinton. It's not whataboutism, which is the stupidest rebuttal to relevant, to a relevant rebuttal. If John Bolton, if President Trump doesn't have a Libya in his eight years, he will have had a better eight years than Obama, no matter what he does. If he doesn't destroy an African nation in Libya, 
or another African nation or, nor, or another country. And he doesn't say, well, we're, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and uh, conduct this NATO bombing to save people. And then the bombing takes place. The dictator in, in, in Hillary's, in Clinton's case, it was we came, we saw, ha, 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 he died, uh, Gaddafi. And then there's now slave auctions, now actual slave auctions in 2016 or 2017 and 2018. And women are forced to go through Libya taking contraceptives because they expect to be raped. Obama did not deserve the Nobel Peace Prize. And he helped destroy a country which he called, and this, this is, these are his words, his, his worst mistake. So let's just go ahead really quickly. Yeah, Bolton is bad, but it's a consolidation of power. He's a yes man. So where, and he's probably not going to, I'm not saying McMaster's leaked anything, or, but he's not an establishment figure. Trump wants to, um, and he also wants to probably have a national security advisor that perhaps people around the world think is nuts and crazy and a war hawk. So Trump can then say, well, you want to strike a deal? He'll roll into a meeting with Kim Jong-un saying, you want to deal with me or a crazy person? Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, uh, Bolton. That's where Trump, I'm... I'm envisioning this, or I'm. This is my analysis because I don't think Trump's going to undo the economic prosperity or the fact that the economy is doing well by suddenly invading and, and, and launching strikes at Iran, because Bolton says so. so. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. So any achievement that he is can be given credit for from a conservative perspective, and I'm I'm. I come at things generally from, I mean, what I want is I lean towards policies on the left a lot of times. And I'm anti-war. I want our soldiers brought home from wars. But Trump's foreign policy is not is not regime change. And I don't think Bolton is there to ensure that it becomes regime change. Trump himself opposed or you know stated that the Iraq war was a huge mistake so let me just get back to what I was going to go ahead and Obama so it is a very interesting consolidation of power by picking a universally disliked universally feared (laughs) international relations theorist or person in John Bolton not a fan, not a fan, but there has to be some, I, I'm assuming there's a method to the madness. And if people say, oh, there's no method to the madness, he's crazy, he's lost it, well, he stated that people, the same people, not, I shouldn't say the same people, but a lot of people who are saying that Trump has lost it now and we are dangerous as a nation and John Bolton's going to invade everybody, um, are the same people who stated that Trump with the nuclear button is going to lead to a nuclear a catastrophe of epic proportions and now he's meeting Kim Jong-un, and now he's meeting North Korea. And if he does so, I firmly believe that he deserves the Nobel Peace Prize. Obama got it for nothing, for doing nothing and then eventually destroying Libya. He should at least get it, Trump, if he meets uh, with Kim Jong-un, which no no president has ever done. But, but let's... So... So, let's just go ahead... Oh, Lord. Whether you're building your small business or managing... Okay. So, let's go ahead. What Obama says is his worst mistake as president. I'm going to tweet this out. Tweet it out. Okay, share it on Facebook. Um, So, the Russian trolls could go ahead and retweet it. Because, you know, it's just so interesting that Russia always happens to really fear Democrats. Anything Democrats do... That is so corrupt and horrible. They're always retweeting. Isn't that funny? Funny how that works. But then they get uranium. Okay, so hold on one second. So this is... This is what Obama says is his worst mistake. What's what's your worst mistake? Is it destroying a country? No. 
It's pre- it could be horrible, but it's not destroying the country. That's Obama's worst mistake, but here, here's President Obama. Terms wind down. President Obama is reflecting on the past eight years in the White House. Speaking with Fox Network anchor Chris Wallace, he was asked what he considers his worst mistake as president. Probably failing to plan for the day after uh, what I think was the right thing to do in, in uh, intervening in Libya. President is referring there to the capture of Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, although President Obama says he thinks the intervention went as well as it could have. He views Libya today as a mess. As his two terms... Okay, so... How did President Obama get away with this in terms of media scrutiny? There's more media outrage over John Bolton than Obama stating, and this is not this is exactly a relevant topic of discussion. Um, I'm not a fan of John Bolton being national security advisor. I don't think that he's just going to go ahead and create wars so that the U.S. economy tanks so that Trump becomes a one-term president. And I certainly don't think that uh, we're going to engage in another Libya. Because that's not what Trump... I, I People say, like, oh, well, Bannon was this nationalist, you know, person that influenced Trump. Trump is not really influenced by anyone. He has his own views. He has his own worldview. He has his own worldview regarding a lot of things. Tariffs, regime change. He's, anti, he's, he's against regime change. Obama was for regime change. You could see Libya was his worst mistake. And he didn't, he, he didn't receive the media scrutiny that... Well, any other president, but also if Trump destroyed Libya, they would say, here is this, you know, um, here is this racist president who destroyed an African nation. They would say that about Trump if he destroyed Libya. But it's President Obama, it's his worst mistake, and he's on Fox, nobody cares. Does that mean Bolton is a good pick? No. (laughs) Bolton is... Not good. But let's just go ahead really quickly again. Let's wind down. President Obama is reflecting on the past eight years in the White House. Speaking with Fox Network anchor Chris Wallace, he was asked what he considers his worst mistake as president. Probably failing to plan for the day after uh, what I think was the right. So this is a very diplomatic way of saying failing to realize that chaos and mayhem would ensue and that removing Gaddafi would lead to a failed state. But again, I mean, it's it's very difficult to get people to realize that President Obama could go ahead and say it was just, you know, a worse, his worst mistake. Um... Oh, this is interesting. Obama, uh, this is Al Jazeera. Obama, on, on Libyan intervention, Obama says U.S. is different. Ten days after the first U.S. bomb was fired, 200 cruise missiles and 600 bombs later, the President of the United States, President Barack Obama, took to the airwaves to tell the American people why he ordered this. Some nations may be able to turn a blind eye to atrocities in other countries. The United States of America is different. And as president, I refuse to wait for the images of slaughter and mass graves before taking action. But there's, there was slaughter and mass graves after Obama took action. And there was slaughter, and now there's slave auctions. So how how it is... I mean, how does anybody justify this in the Democratic Party? No, John Bolton is not a good pick. But within the context of what took place the past 10 years or 8 years, this is President Obama before before the slave auctions in Libya and before the women going through Libya being forced to take contraceptives because they expect to be raped. 
He is fighting the words of his own Secretary of Defense, who has very publicly said the fight for Libya is not a vital interest to the United States. And Gates was right. And guess what else Gates is right about? The fact that Clinton's server was hacked. People say, are you going to spin this to talk about Clinton's server? Well, Gates said don't go into Libya, and he also stated that it's almost certain that Iran, China, and Russia hacked Clinton's server. So there you go. He's right about both things. The president citing the list of reasons he thinks it is. Fear it would destabilize Tunisia and Egypt, and that it would send the wrong message to leaders fighting other popular revolutions. The wrong message? What message is going on now? Wherever people long to be free, they will find a friend in the United States. But in the same speech, the president seemed to contradict those words, hinting at what critics have called a double standard with allies, like... All right, so let's go ahead and so Africans are being sold at Libyan slave markets thanks Hillary Clinton this is definitely absolutely horrific nothing to sm why is this? Oh, yeah. Nothing to. We came, we saw he died, choked. Uh, she choked. But overthrowing Gaddafi was a humanitarian strategic debacle that now limits our options in North Korea. This is the USA Today. I'm going to go ahead and. Let's go ahead and share this again on Twitter. Black Africans are being sold in open-air slave markets, and it's Hillary Clinton's fault, but you won't hear much about that from the news media or foreign policy pundits, so let me explain. Footage from Libya. This is by Glenn Harlan Reynolds. Uh, it's a brilliant article. Footage from Libya re rec re released recently by CNN showed young men from sub-Saharan Africa being auctioned off as farm workers in slave markets. And how do we get to this point? As the BBC reported back in May, Libya has been beset by chaos since NATO-backed forces overthrew long-serving ruler Colonel Muammar Gaddafi in October of 2011. And who was behind the overthrow? None other, th none other than Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Under President George W. Bush in 2003, the United States negotiated an agreement with Libyan strongman Gaddafi. The deal, he would give up his weapons of mass destruction peacefully, and he wouldn't try to and we wouldn't try to depose him. That seemed a good deal at the time, but the Obama administration didn't stick to it. Instead, in an operation spearheaded by Clinton, the United States went ahead and toppled him anyway. The overthrow turned out to be a debacle. Libya exploded into chaos and civil war, and refugees flooded Europe, destabilizing governments there. But at the time Clinton thought it was a great triumph. We came, we saw he died, she joked about Gaddafi's overthrow, and an advisor, Sidney Blumenthal, which should ne the, guy, guy should, the guy should never have been an advisor, he wasn't even part of the U.S. government, encouraged her to tout her successful strategy as evidence of her fitness for the highest office in the land. This is USA Today, I'm reading. It's surprising the extent to which Clinton has gotten a free pass for this debacle, which represents a humanitarian strategic failure of the first order, and of course the damage is still compounding. How likely is North Korea's Kim Jong-un to give up his nuclear weapons after seeing the worthlessness of U.S. promises to Gaddafi? Back during his brief stint in the Democratic primary, former Senator uh, James Webb raised the issue, saying America blew the lid off of a series of tribal engagements. You can't get to the Tripoli airport right now, much less Benghazi. But the Libya disaster continues to unfold. C uh, Clinton's role in it gets surprisingly little attention. Maybe it's buried under the Clinton-Obama debacles in the Middle East, such as the botched Syrian policy the Washington Post's Fred Hyatt called, quote, a humanitarian and cultural disaster of epical, uh, epical proportions. Remember President Obama's red line, okay, that Syria crossed and Obama didn't enforce. Okay, so, and of course, then there, there's the Ye Yemen policy, which Obama bragged about as a model for the war on terror. Interesting. I didn't, I didn't, 
realize that Obama bragged about it as a model for the war on terror. But now Yemen is another war-wracked humanitarian strategic disaster. Still, Libya is in a class of its own. In Syria and Yemen, at least the situation was already bad. Libya, before Clinton got involved, was a comparatively stable and, and was comparatively stable and no strategic threat to the U.S. or its allies. Now it's in shambles with people literally being sold in slave markets. Back in 2012 presidential campaign, Vice President Biden told a group of African Americans that the GOP was going to put you all back in chains. But it turned out that it was Clinton's policies that led to black people being sold. As some ponder another Hillary Clinton run in 2020, that's worth pointing out. So this is uh, Glenn Harry and Reynolds, a University of Tennessee law professor. This was published. Um, it's obviously published before. As some ponder another, oh, sorry, another Hillary Clinton run in 2020. That's worth pointing out. So November 27th, 2017. Again, does this make Bolton's pick good? No. But when people say that they really fear Bolton and oh my god he's 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 out of his mind and you know Trump is crazy and Bolton is crazy I believe that there's something more to this than simply I don't think Bolton is an overwhelming figure you go from a four a three-star general to Bolton who's who's the greater power there Trump is you go from a three-star general who has like gravitas and and influence and clout. It's not like Trump is not going to be forced to kind of listen to him. To John Bolton, where he can go ahead and do his own thing. Let's just go ahead and let's look at all the non-John Boltons out there. Not then again, this is not a defense of Bolton. He, I, don't, I would rather not have him there. All right, so. This is who could have been president. Unconfirmed. Yes, we came, we saw, he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, I'm not sure it did. <laughs> They're going to be captured or killed. Democratic Jewish. And that is the, so I mean, so, I mean that is the land of unconfirmed. Yes, yes, we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> so... Oh, what's this? Hillary Clinton is evil remix. Okay, so hold on one second. So, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed. Yes, yes. we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, I'm not sure it did. All right, so that's CBS. So let's just hear it again. This is the Democratic nominee that cheated Bernie Sanders, that stole the nomination, okay, and then complained about Russia stealing the, nom the presidency from her. So, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed voters. Yes, we came. We saw, he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, I'm not sure it did. All right, so, again, not a good thing, but I don't, I don't believe that Trump is going to relive the mistakes. I am hoping, I am hoping that he's not. But let's just look at John Bolton. So he's said a lot of crazy things. The Clinton Foundation is a political machine. So, like I said, you're not going to get H.R. McMaster to speak about this, not defending the move, but let's just see what he says. Lord. This kind of bolsters my overall point. Trump is, you got Gina Haspel at the CIA. 
owes her appointment as the head of the CIA to Trump. Pompeo, yes, man. All of it is going to be to expedite Clinton's emails. Christopher Ray, FBI. He's wrestled control of the intelligence community. Okay, so let's go ahead and this is John Bolton. He's he's bringing like-minded people, or he's bringing people that will not will not say, "Hey, no, you can't do that," or um, will not give the establishment view. I'm not saying that Bolton is good, but here's here's Bolton on Lou Dobbs. World, are there not rules against precisely the kind of conduct she engaged in? Well, wor words fail me when I look at what she did, leaving the email scandal aside just for a minute on the Clinton Foundation. That's all I'm talking about right now is the foundation right now. You know, when, I, when, I, when I've joined the State Department from the private sector, I've had to renounce every tie, not just on business operations, but charitable organizations. It's like joining a monastery. Why did she not? And she apparently didn't have to. You know, this subject came up at her confirmation hearings in 2009, and she pledged that she would not do anything, uh, either in fact or in appearance, that would compromise. My God, she lied. Uh, uh, amazingly, once How again. How stupid are the Republicans on Capitol Hill? I would just like you to give us an impression of how dumb they are. Well, I think this should have been the subject of many more hearings. I can remember what it's like to be an official in a Republican administration with Democratic Congresses because the depths are, are not being plumbed at the moment and will not be before November the 8th. Well, let me ask you another way. Where are uh, Mitch McConnell? Where are Paul Ryan? So the Clinton Foundation is a political machine. John Bolton. Let's go ahead. I think she... Day, people talk about Hillary Clinton's failures, of which there are many, character failures, ethics failures, the whole, the whole long line uh, is a day that's good for the Trump campaign, good for, good for Republican candidates all the way down the ballot. I, I take that as the effect. What I don't see is the cause. I don't see the cause being advanced by either Mitch McConnell or Paul Ryan, leaders of the Senate and the House. I don't see it being advanced by the standard bearer of 2000. Pass it on to them, because I do think this is a potential... I thought they, <laughs> they better be watching, right? All right, so give me your thoughts below. What I'm trying to provide in this segment is context. Context. Um, I also addressed this in a prior segment because reports were already out that he was thinking of doing this anyway. Um, but the context here is not imminent war with Iran. You know, we, President Obama's Iran deal, in retrospect, was horrible. They can actually test missiles. So they can actually test their missiles. We can go ahead and read. And then um, I, I am against attacking Iran, absolutely against it. But missile, Obama, Iran... Iran has fired 23 ballistic missiles <laughs> since the start of the 2015 nuclear deal. Um, so it's not, I mean, you go from Libya to this to, I mean, President Obama's legacy, if looked at objectively, is, is not a good legacy. It's not a good legacy. You say, well, he saved the economy. Yeah. What's, what's it, McCain would have done the same thing. They would have pumped money in. It, the, the bailout started under Bush. So tell me how Obama... Like, I have friends who say to me, two in particular, very intelligent, very intelligent, Obama was the best president of my lifetime. They tell me, that Obama was the best president of my lifetime. Who was a better president? Who was a brighter president, AJ? Who was a better president? And I'm like... <sighs> It's very difficult to go and explain all of this. Um, Iran has fired 23 ballistic missiles. So a nuclear treaty or a nuclear deal just, I guess, didn't involve firing ballistic missile tests. Iran has aggressively pursued its, its ballistic missile program since agreeing to the 2015 nuclear deal. Regularly launching <laughs> nuclear capable missiles in what critics consider a violation of the spirit of the deal <laughs> gee you think 
The report shows Iran has fired some 23 missiles since signing the deal, as many as 16 of them nuclear capable. So how is this raiding in Iran? Oh, you know, this is a great achievement. Uh, the, you know, the, the Iran deal was a great achievement. No, it wasn't. It wasn't a great achievement. Because they're still furthering the nuclear program just above ground, just through missiles and missile tests. How do you think you're going to deliver, uh, deliver a nuclear weapon through um, nuclear-capable missiles? The report shows Iran has fired 23 missiles since signing the deal, as many as 16 of them nuclear-capable. The contra controversial deal reached with Ob the Obama administration did not include a ban on missiles. Why not? That's stupid. Why didn't the Iran nuclear deal include a ban on missiles that would then, <laughs> that could transport, that could launch nuclear weapons? And Iran and European signatories to the agreement stress international inspectors have certified Iran in compliance. Well, okay. International inspectors are okay with 23 missile launches? Then there's always a positive spin. It never ends. It never, ever ends. Out of all the ballistic missiles Iran fired in 2017, only four or five could be considered nuclear capable. <laughs> only four or five. In 2016, Iran fired 10 to 12 missiles that could be considered nuclear capable. It is highly unlikely that the administration's threat intimidated... Oh, sorry. <laughs> so I'm reading it, reading it the wrong way. Uh, so it is highly unlikely the administration's threat intimidated Tehran, altering its, its flight te testing calculus. So it's actually not. So that it's, it's you're going from an inept... The Obama administration, administration was inept in many ways, but they were so they were marketed in such an amazing manner, and they were like just lionized by the media. That you don't know these things, you don't know that Iran fired twenty three ballistic missiles. Well, how could that be? How could Iran have fired twenty three ballistic missiles since the nuclear deal? Did it? In, it you know, didn't the nuclear deal also include? No. No, wrong. It didn't include missiles. Missile testing. Well, why not? Well, who knows? What about Libya? Well, you know, it was a mistake. You know, oopsie. Mistake. Um, what about the involvement in Yemen? Getting, getting, getting us into Yemen, which Obama said was a model uh, formula against terrorism. So we can go on and on. We can go on and on. The context being... The context being... That whereas Bolton is is not a good pick, could he be that much worse than Obama's administration in terms of foreign policy? Oh yeah, ISIS's JV, the JV team. Did Obama, ISIS, JV. Keep in mind, okay, I wasn't specifically, oh, so then he says, I wasn't specifically referring to, but there's another argument, uh, that's, of course. Sorry, Democrats, Obama's more responsible for ISIS than Trump. Obama's evolution on ISIS. Whenever they mess up, whether it's Clinton or Obama, it's an evolution. So. January 27, 2014. This is the this is the New York Times. President Obama described the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria as the Sunni militant group was widely known at the time as a junior varsity basketball team playing down the strategic threat posed by ISIS compared with Al-Qaeda. The analogy we use around here sometimes, and I think it's accurate, is if a JV team puts on a Lakers uniform, that doesn't make them Kobe Bryant, Mr. Obama told David Remnick of The New Yorker. So, okay, where's the... Um, the article. That's here's the article. 
there's the okay the analogy we use around here sometimes and i think it's ac- is accurate is if a jv team puts on a lakers uniform that doesn't make them kobe bryant in 2000 in pr- the, the preceding the preceding paragraphs let's see they talk about anyway i think there is a, a, there is a distinction a distinction I think there is a distinction between the capacity and reach of bin Laden and a network that is actively planning major terrorist plots against the homeland versus jihadists who are engaging in various local power struggles and disputes, often sectarian. But of course he wasn't referring to ISIS. <laughs> then he goes, let's keep in mind, Fallujah is a profoundly conservative Sunni city. And so he was re- referring to ISIS anyway. This is just an example, another example of something that within the Obama administration that if it happened under Trump, it would be non-stop. I mean, they would paint him as the biggest clown buffoon Trump. But Obama can say, my mistake, Syria. I mean, a mistake, Libya. Oh, they don't even get him on Syria weapons deals. 500 million for, like... A failed weapons program that in one article, Time article is like five or ten uh, Syrian rebels, something insane like that. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. Just giving some context. Um, it's not good, but what can you do? It's not good, but then again, it's not Obama bad. It's not as bad as destroying Libya. It's not as bad as 23 ballistic missiles being launched from Iran. Um, give me your thoughts. Share this segment everywhere. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out my debate with Richard Spencer the last 20 minutes below in the pinned comment. Thank you so much for listening.